Well, major titles, fighting back from the brink, tungsten tenacity, darting doggedness, all things that Robert Thornton has been well known for in his career. I'm delighted to have this chat with Robert. Look, everyone knows that the big glories, and we'll talk about some of those in a moment, but just tell us where it all started for you, this sort of love affair with darts. Um, I think I was nine. Uh, my dad got me into darts. Uh, I think I started beating him by the age of 13, so he wasn't too happy. But then I stopped for a while. Uh, but everywhere I moved, I always had a dartboard up. So you knew you were pretty good at darts at a, a young age, and then you didn't play for quite some time. It's, you're quite late coming to the professional circuit, weren't you? Yeah, but I met my wife, and then we stopped. We brought the kids up. Uh, but I always practised everywhere I went. It was always there was a dartboard up. First thing it could be up was a dartboard in a new house, so it was <laughs> it was one of them. But yeah, and I was I was lucky. She enjoyed darts and all. Was it something that you knew at some stage you would try and take seriously? To bunch me, no, it was a hobby. I mean, I watched some of them on the telly and I thought, I can play better than some of them. And she told me to go and prove it and that's how it all started. So you sort of started getting into Opens, professional stuff around, what, 2002, 2003? Yeah. And within five years, you turn up at the Winmore World Masters. Yeah. And you win it. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, I missed out by Lakeside, I think, by one game. And the only way to get into Lakeside was, was to win the World Masters, and it just happened that I did. Just going back to that, was that for you a, a life-changing experience? Or was that when you really realised that this is going to be my career? Even back then, I didn't think it was going to be a career. Uh, to me, it was still a hobby. Um, I never really took it serious, serious, if you know what I mean. And then when I won the Masters, I, kinda, I made Lakeside again. Uh, and that's when I got the opportunity to move to the PDC, and then I, that's when I really started taking it serious. Just going back to that Masters, you beat Daryl Fitton in the final, but you beat Martin Adams before that, and he was the world number one at the time. Yeah. So even that didn't make you think, look, I'm, I'm as good as anybody. No, <laughs> didn't they? No, I just thought, right, on to the next tournament, and that was it. Um, PDC, you mentioned, you've achieved many fantastic things, won a lot of floor events, won every day sometimes at protos and things like that. Yeah. What were the early days like for you in the PDC? It was hard. I mean, I had to travel everywhere uh, because I wanted to get up in the rankings and stuff like that. And for two years solid, I would say, I think I was the only one in the PDC that done every tournament. And the only one next to me was Mark Walsh. He missed out with two. And it was, it was grueling. It was hard on the family as well. Yeah. And you won some proto events, got to a big final. Lost to Phil Taylor quite early on. Were you starting to, by then, are you thinking, right, this is my future? Yeah, it, it, it was like that. And I, I was getting there and I'm going, I can live with these boys. I can actually play the same as them. And it, it just kind of escalated. The one I really want to talk about is 2012. Going into the UK Open, I mean, you've been quite unwell, hadn't you, before that? Yeah, time? I had pneumonia. Um, I was off for quite a bit. And I think. The UK Open was my first major tournament back. And to progress in that and win it was unbelievable. How, how bad was that illness? Because I think some people underestimate how big a deal it was for you to come into the UK It Open. was pretty bad. I think it was laid up for about three or four months and I couldn't even lift my darts. And I, it was my wife that said, just, just take it at your own pace. If you, don't, if you can't play, don't play. Just to give viewers an indication, he was a 250 to one outsider to win that tournament. Yeah. And it's an open draw, isn't it? But the draw yeah. that you had, I mean, if you'd have seen it before the tournament, you'd have thought, this is Yeah, I, I, just, I watched the draw every night and I went, come on, give me a break, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But I, I think every player I got, apart from Dennis Priestley at the time, were all Premier League players. And I just thought, well, they've all, we've all got to beat each other, so just get up there, knuckled in and play. Culminating in, of course, a final with the governor, Phil yeah. Taylor. And you didn't just beat him, you battered him in that final, <laughs> didn't you? People say that, but he did miss a, he, he missed a lot of doubles with it. My finish in that day was pretty good, and I never gave him second chances. Brilliant then. Then you got into the Premier League, things like that. Another governor comes along, Michael Van Gerwen. You get to the World Grand Prix, and you, you see him off as well in the final. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he thought he had it when he went 4-3 up, and I pulled it back to 4 each. And then I just thought to myself, do you know what I've got him? I felt I had him, do you know what I mean? Just, I seen it look in his eye, and he, he didn't have that killer, extra killer bit then. And I think I, think I knocked the stuffing out of him, and 
I got it. There's a nice story about that as well, because the year before, you really felt you were going to win the Grand Prix. You had that nine yeah. dollar against James Wade yeah. in that incredible match. What were your memories of that, that match and that year? That match, I, believe it or not, is very vague. I, I, it was the day I buried my mum, and it was, just, it's, it was like going through the emotion. The emotions just, I was here, but no there, if you know what I mean. It, 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 it was surreal. So you'd buried your mum that day and then flown back to Dublin? Then flown back to Dublin to play James that night, yeah. Wow. And then he hits a nine dart finish, only yeah. the second one ever in the World Grand Prix double start format. Yeah. And you decide to hit one back at him. Yeah, we made history <laughs> that night. I mean, it was, it was it's amazing to be part of it, don't get me wrong. But I think I, th I think I missed double 12 to beat him. And it was just one of them. I think I was meant to win it that year, I would have. Do you know what I mean? Did and I come out and win it the next year. Did you have that thing in your head for sort of the next 12 months that <coughs> I've got unfinished business in this tournament? No, I mean, everybody asks me, what's my favourite game? It's double start, double finish. I mean, uh, that is my favourite game, and I used to practice that quite a lot. There is um, a, a stat that I've been researching before this interview, and I was trying to work out how many players had beaten both Michael Van Gogh and Phil Taylor in a big final. I could only come up with four, yourself, Rob Cross, Gary Anderson and Rema Van Barneveld. What does it feel like to hear that? And, and do you feel like you are... A legend of this sport? No, I, no, I'm just me. I'm, I'm, it's, I don't mind them calling me a legend when I retire and stuff like that. But as long as I'm still playing, I'm not a legend. I mean, it's a jockey. Wilson's a legend. Eric Bristol's a legend. Do you know what I mean? They 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 done fantastic. I don't class myself as a legend. Do you think that's down to the fact that you didn't have in in PDC Darts a world championship title to your name? No, not at all. I think I was meant to win what was meant to win in the PDC and, and that was it. If I was meant to win a World Championships, I would have done that. There has been a new lease of life from the World Seniors Championships. Ironically, the two places that you didn't really win in the PDC were the match play and the World Championships. Yeah, and I won them. You've now got two <laughs> World Championships and a World Match Play in the Seniors. How much of sort of joy and fun and lust for the game has that given you as well? It's absolutely amazing. The Seniors is great. I mean... You've got players for yesterday and that, and they're, they're still playing fantastic. Look at Martin Adams, he's, what, 66, 67? If I'm throwing darts like that at 67, I want to keep playing, do you know what I mean? It's, it's fantastic. The first year, you were quite a hot favourite to go into that tournament. The next year, other people were tipping other players and not really mentioning Robert Thornton, the defending champion. Yeah, because I've never, ever defended a title before, ever. So going into it the second time, people have turned and say, well, he's never defended one, so we'll write him off. But that's a... A, a bad thing to do, isn't it? Write off Robert Thornton. Yeah, that's a whole different story, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, don't write me off. I mean, it, it, it's kind of silly. I wrote me off in the UK Open and the Grand Prix, and I come back and won them. I remember that Grand Prix as well, and, and your wife Christine came up with an incredible line. She said that Robert Thornton, uh, he's a pit bull with the heart of a lion. Aye, she's that always called me that. Description. Always amazing. She's been a big support to you. Oh, she? definitely. She's she's been a rock. Do you know what I mean? She's she's been the driving force. There's been, there's been tournaments I haven't felt that great, and then she just went, just got to try your best, and I won them. How important is it to have that? You're up there throwing the darts, but to know you've got that support to them. You need a good woman behind you. You, do, you need a good family behind you, and I've got the most amazing family ever. What are your ambitions now as a darts player? Things that, the, the landscape's changed massively, hasn't it, over the last three years. Where, where do you fit into it? I want to try and get to a final. I want to <laughs> I want to try and get actually win a Saturday night, but... No, I mean, it's, I'll take whatever comes along. I mean, I want to keep winning the seniors. I want to win a couple I've missed. Do you know what I mean? And it's, we'll just take it as it goes. And when you do finally decide, right, that's it, feet up, when you look back on your career then, how do you think you yourself will reflect on it? People like me regard you as an all-time great, but how do you reflect on it yourself? I, th I, th I think I've done amazing. Um, my wife says she's done her job. She's made me a world champion, but I'm twice a senior world champion now, so... She always said she'd make me a world champion, and she's done it. And you've still got the fire in the belly? Oh, definitely. And we'll see it here at the Modus Super Series. Robert, it's been a pleasure. No problem, mate.